Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I got a very special video. We fly FPV drones, we build them, we crash them, we, we solder on them, we wire them, we program them, we do all kind of fancy schmancy stuff. But what about when our charger goes down? And our charger is very prevalent to flying and building drones. So today we're going to learn how to fix this guy when it's giving you this problem. All right, pilot. So let me show you what's going on here. We're gonna power this guy up. All right. As you can see, it powers up very nicely. Everything looks good. I'm gonna throw a battery in. I'm getting a battery signal here, but that's only because this battery is in storage. Don't worry about that. See? So don't worry about that. Now I'm gonna plug this battery in. Okay, we've got all four cells. Yes, we're in storage, but that's okay. I'm going to click start. And now I'm going to charge LiPo. That's my cell voltage. That's my cell count, which is accurate. And that is how many amps. All right, I'm going to hit start. And as you can see, this current operation is not supported. So I have gone through the settings thoroughly. Okay. I also have done the calibration, I've done the self-checking. There's nothing wrong software-wise with this, because that's your first thought, because everything looks good, I mean, right? Everything looks great. But my first thought is, well, it must be a setting, because it's saying the current operation isn't supported. But I'm telling you right now, it's not a setting. Something else is going on. We're going to check it out, and we're going to see what the electronics look like. Let's see if the board has power, if uh, everything looks okay. Let's see if there's a short or something on here has got to be burnt or fried or broken or bent or twisted. So, something's up, and we're going to find out. Velcro on here. Don't worry about that. It's not covering anything in our way, but there are no screws. What I want you to do is get your heat gun. If you have a hot air station, hot air gun. If you've got one, if you don't, go get your wife or mom's hair dryer. If you got a battery nearby, get it out of the way. Don't burn nothing. All right, so without cracking it, just heating it up just a little bit, you can see I'm able to work this off. All right, so there you go. Your screen is off. Don't touch that screen. All right, all four screws are out. All right, pilots, so you got it apart. Now, I want you to be careful. There's a lot of electronics here. If you got any static on you, get rid of it. And try not to touch this screen if you can. The ribbon connector. Right there. Come on. There it is. Alright pilots, real quick before we continue on, I want to tell you if you accidentally touch your screen, they have these little cotton deals that are for your face, you know, to clean off your makeup when you're done flying or <laughs> going out on the town. You can use these. These are fantastic. You wrap your finger in it, give it a little rub. It might leave a little bit of fuzz left, but you give it a blow and you're all gravy. We've got our screen off. We're going to set that to the side. We're going to have to start testing components and see what we can find. All right, there's our fan. Got a nice heat sink. All right, so I'm thinking I'm seeing some action here. Something looks like it might be burnt right here. Maybe a regulator or something. I'm going to go ahead and pull this fan out of the way. Alright pilots, so I'm going to get my multimeter and I'm going to go ahead and do some testing. I'll be back in a bit. Two hours later. Alright pilots, so 
I hunted around, I searched around on this board, I've checked capacitors, I've checked resistors, I've checked, I've checked everything. And uh, right before I was ready to give up, I found, right, let me show you, I found this right here. And this is actually a fuse. It took a little bit of figuring out. And let me show you something. If I put my meter in continuity mode and I touch this fuse, but the fuse is testing good. Well over here on the output, which is where I'm having problems, this is also a fuse. And if I put my multimeter on it, as you can see, I've got nothing. So you can see here that there's no physical damage. There's nothing here that says, hey, this fuse is blown. Um, I went ahead and pulled the schematic and I was able to find that this fuse is a 30 amp fuse. We're gonna go ahead and replace this fuse and see if that's the culprit. I'm hoping that it is. Let's go ahead and do that now. I found uh, this is a 30 amp fuse. I did find its equivalent through DigiKey uh, with the emailed support of ISDT. They're great by the way. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that now. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll find out together. If it doesn't work, we'll continue to troubleshoot and I'll still post the video so that way you guys can, you know, still learn about your ISDT charger. Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and remove this guy. Let me show this to you. There it is, soldered to my tweezers. Next thing we want to do, next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and clean these pads up. It's really easy to touch something you're not supposed to. Now let's get in there and tidy up a little bit. Alright pilots, so we're all cleaned up. We're ready to go. It doesn't look as clean, but it actually is clean. I'm going to put a little bit of solder right here. And a little bit right here. There we go. That one didn't really set good. There we go. Eh, we could put a little bit more probably. Let's get some flux on there. There we go. Get my fan on. Now let's do this. Kill the fan, kill the heat gun, and let's go ahead and take a look. It's looking good. Alright, let's go ahead and clean it up. Alright, pilots, so we have got our we have got our new part on. It's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and test for continuity. Let's make sure we've got it. Oh baby, that's a nice sound. That means we're probably on the right track. So let's go ahead and put this guy back together so we can test it and see if we fixed it.
Alright pilots, so now we're ready to put this back on. You can add a little bit of glue or whatever you want to do, hot glue, whatever you want to do to put this back on. Me, I'm not going to because I'm not very rough with mine. Ignore the, the scratches. Those are just this cover, which I, I didn't peel off before, but I'll peel it off now. So, I'm going to go ahead and stick this here. Hopefully I aligned it well. And then give it a pushy push back on. And then I've got a ton of scratches, so now I can go ahead and take advantage of this time. There we go. Bam. So, I know you saw a bunch of scratches, but it's important for you to know they were not on there. That's why I left this on. Alright, pilots, now it's time to give her a test. Let's see how we did. We're going to need two batteries. Alright, any two batteries will work, it doesn't matter. Alright, first thing you want to do is go ahead and plug the guy in. Alright, she starts up, that's a good sign, we didn't screw nothing up too bad. We're still getting our low battery, but we already knew that because this battery is in storage. Let's see. I mean, everything looks good thus far. Here's the moment of truth that it don't explode. Okay. It's looking good now before as you saw in the beginning of the video when we go to charge we were getting an error reading so hopefully that reading will now be gone all right cell looks good everything looks good let's see oh that is actually a protection I have on because I use a big battery to charge I don't want that battery to pass storage. Let's see if this one is low enough. All right, pilots, looks like we pulled it off. We're looking good, everything's working. We're reaching up to our full amperage, which is awesome. We're moving milliamp hours over. This is fantastic. This is great news. All right, guys, so. Um, I do want to show you the part that I used in case you're having the same problem. This is the part that I got. You can get it from DigiKey. I will go ahead and leave this up here just for a second while I talk. That way if you need to write these numbers down you can or do a screenshot or whatever. Wanted to just sum up so we found a bad fuse. It was a 30 amp fuse. We went ahead and we replaced it and now our charger is fixed and working. We saved ourselves somewhere around 60 bucks. Can't beat that. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this video helped you guys and I'll see you on the next one.